Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video we're going to talk about the absolute basic output of running the multiple linear regression model. As an example, we've got as a dependent variable earnings. As the independent variables, we've got experience in working, say measured in years, and schooling, number of years of schooling. Let's say to keep things uh, well, earnings. Let's say that's measured in thousands of dollars. So the units is earnings is in thousand dollars. Experience is in years. Schooling is in years. We wish to regress earnings on experience and schooling, which means that we're taking experience and schooling as the IVs and earnings as the DV. So in short, we say jargon is to say it will regress the earnings on experience and schooling. Okay, to do it, go to analyze, regression, linear, transfer into the dependent variable box the earnings and into the independent variable box the, the two IVs. Notice there are some options and statistics and plots available to us. We'll ignore those. We'll go OK. Okay. First box isn't doesn't interest us at all. It just tells us what has what the IVs are that are in the model. Right. Model summary. This box contains the R square. Now, for multiple regression, we wish to report and look at the adjusted R square rather than the R square. Okay. And recall that the R square stroke adjusted R square measures the proportion of the total variability in the DV that is explained by the IVs, the model. So here we could report, since it's adjusted R squared is about 0.189, we'll, we can report that about, to convert into percentages, 19% of the total variability in earnings is explained by the model. Or instead of saying the model, we can say that. 19% of the total variability in earnings is explained by experience and schooling. Okay. Now, doesn't mean the R square is not useful here. If there's a big discrepancy between R square and adjusted R square, it suggests that some of the IVs we included in the regression model is redundant. Okay, but it's not really a good way, there's a more precise way of checking whether that's the case, whether we've included more IVs than we need to, as we shall see shortly. Right, then we'll come on to the two tests in the following two tables. And over table presents the, the key thing here is the F statistic, the F test. And how we get this figure here, 5.537, is using these three columns. All right, so it's as a means to an end. All these three columns, we're not just interested in those figures, we're interested in these two final figures which are obtained from the first three. Now being a test, we being stat apply statisticians just need to know what is the null and the alternative. The null hypothesis always for this F-test in the ANOVA for regression is that the model has no explanatory power, which is the same as saying that all the coefficients on the IVs is zero. Well, that's the same as saying that none of the IVs help to predict the DV. In other words, model is useless. All right. Is it, do we reject the null or not reject the null? Well, look at the p-value, which is labeled as sig significance. 0 0.008, way less than 0.05. Indeed, it's even less than 0.01, so we conclude there's very strong evidence to reject the null, that the model has no explanatory power. Okay, next, co coefficients. Now, this is the, the most interesting of all because it tells us about the relationship between the IVs and the DV through the coefficients. Okay, so first of all, we'll just look at each each of these rows here. There's a corresponding T statistic, all right? We're interested in the ones for 
the IVs, so experience. T statistic is 2.48, significance 0.018. Now, what is the null for the T stat here? By default, the null for the T stat in the regression is that the coefficient for the IV is 0. That's the same as saying that the IV doesn't help predict the DV, that particular IV. All right. So does experience is experience significant? Yes, we reject the null because the p-value for this t is 0.018, which is less than 0.05. Schooling, t is 2.967, significance 0.005, that is less than 0.05. If you're unsure, just get out your calculator, 0.05 minus 0.005 is positive. So they are both significant. So it's so in other words, they each have predictive uh, ability for dv. Next, we move on to the coefficients. God, how I hate every time you look at the box, it's always got this yellow thing, box flashing up. Double click to activate. Get rid of that. OK. There it is again. Right. Now, where was I? Right, coefficients. Where these coefficients are interesting, we're looking at the unstandardized rather than standardized coefficients. We're looking at the unstandardized coefficients. These coefficients, we need to check two things. First of all, does the sign make sense as positive or negative, according to what theory suggests? In this case, education theory. So experience on um, on uh, salary, well, on earnings, well, you expe expect that the more experience you have, the higher earnings you should get, so you'd expect a positive coefficient. Indeed, we do, because it's positive, not 0.1854. Schooling, you expect the more years of schooling you have, the higher the earnings, so that works out to be positive. There you go, positive 0.2768. Next comes on to the interpretation of the coefficients. An interpretation for experience goes like, well, let's um, step back a bit. In general, the coefficients on the IV in multiple regression goes like this. For a one unit increase in IV, the model predicts that the DV will increase or decrease, depending on the sign on the coefficient, by blah 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 units, holding all other IVs constant. So I'll say that again because that's important. I'll say it in another way. The model predicts that for a one unit increase in that IV, the DV will increase or decrease by blah 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 units holding all other IVs fixed. Let's uh, do that now for this example. So experience 1.854, recall I said experience is measured in years and earnings is measured in thousands of dollars. So we would say the model predicts that for a one year increase in experience, work experience, the earnings will increase by times this by a thousand, one thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars holding years of schooling fixed. Okay, why I said 1,854 is because I could have said it's 1.854 thousands of dollars. So instead of saying thousands, 1.84 thousand dollars, just convert, just times that by a thousand. Okay, next one, years of schooling. Coefficient is plus 2.768. We would say that the model predicts that for an additional year of schooling, the earnings will increase by $2,768 holding years of experience fixed. Okay. And that's the interpretation of the unstandardized coefficients. For the standardized coefficients, the which is I hardly ever use this, but some of you may need to report it, is that everything, the units, like when I said one unit increase in IV leads to a blah 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 
increase or decrease in the you in um, in the DV by so many units the units um, are the standard deviations so for experience we would say that for a one standard deviation increase in experience the model predicts that the earnings will increase by 0.358 standard deviations all right it just gives you an idea of the sensitivity of the DV to changes of the IV but in terms of real life interpretation doesn't talk about standard deviations uh, doesn't mean much to people all right so for that reason this is what we want okay now if I can just uh, review then quickly model summary we're interested in reporting the adjusted R square the ANOVA we're interested in reporting the F now if it fails the F there is no point continuing to look at the coefficients because if it fails the F it means that the model is useless okay if it passes the F we move on to this one and then we'll look at the T now if these T's are, are significant we look at these coefficients check the sign do they make sense from a theory viewer point if they don't make sense from a theory from point of view of theory it might mean that you haven't included you haven't included some key IVs, so you might be missing some variables. All right. Um, if those signs of those coefficients matches with what you expect from theory, by theory I don't mean statistical theory, I mean theory of the application of the data. For example, here we're looking at education data, so it's from education theory. If you're doing something from psychology, you'd look at you appeal to psychology theory from what you expect the signs to be, and for economics and so on. So once these signs do make sense, then we can use it for interpretation. Interpretation of the coefficients. Right. Now, one final thing to say is that, and it's important as well, is that these test statistics, the F, T, only are valid if certain conditions hold for the model. Okay. Uh, and this is where you do a residual analysis or what they call diagnostic checking. So in reading off the F and T I've assumed that certain things about the model hold and so that these things are valid. Okay so that uh, concludes the very very basic introduction to multiple regression.